Hello everyone, today I am going to show you how you can control speed of any tool that uses a universal motor. For instance, I have an electric drill. This is electric main driven and you can, uh, it uses a universal motor. And you can easily control the speed by a technique I am going to show you. I have another thing. This is a Dremel rotary tool and it doesn't have any speed control option and a jigsaw this also uses a universal motor so there are two options of controlling the speed of such a universal motor one is to use a simple track driven speed control that is uh, this is a simple uh, dimmer, dimmer circuit that uses a track inside but one has to be very careful about using this kind of simple device because this is limited to 500 watt and uh, 5 amp maximum. So these are mainly used for low power devices. So if you wish to use a higher powered motor, then you have to replace the uh, triac inside that. And another option of controlling a universal motor is to use PWM or pulse width modulation technique. I have a breadboard version of this kind of PWM controller. Uh, AC mains is converted to DC, then filtered and then chopped by a uh, PWM circuit. And this chopping is done by a MOSFET or IGBT. Here I use a uh, MOSFET to chop the DC. And higher the duty cycle of the PWM means higher speed and lower means low speed. So I am going to show both of these. Electric tools that we use every day, some are AC mains powered and some are rechargeable battery powered. The AC mains powered tools mostly use motors called universal motors. These are called universal motors as this can run on both AC and DC. This slide shows two examples. One is a electric drill and another one is a rotary drummer, drill tool. Few of these mainstream tools have speed control option. Most of these don't, don't have. On many occasions we need to have a speed control for such kind of devices. One way of controlling the speed is to use a simple lamp dimmer, which uses a semiconductor device called triac. The other way is to convert first from AC to DC and then using a power semiconductor device, either MOSFET or IGBT, we can control the speed of the motor. A PWM signal or pulse width modulated signal should be applied to the gate. There are some advantages and disadvantages of both the control circuit. For AC track control, it is cheap, but the high peak current causes poor efficiency and high brush current and temperature limits the motor lifetime. On the other hand, the PWM control, it is a little expensive and complicated Peak to peak current is a smaller, reduced iron loss and brush temperature, torque ripple and magnetic constriction decreases, increases motor lifetime, AC mains noise that is the 60 years noise will decrease. First I'll try to explain the cheaper control system that is using a triac. A triac is a three terminal device. With no gate signal, the track will not conduct, so no current will go through the motor. Now, if we apply some trigger signal at the gate, the track will conduct less than half a cycle. To achieve our speed control, we have to repeat the gate trigger in synchronism with, uh, with the AC mains. The position of the trigger pulse controls the average flow of the current through the motor. To control 
phase of the get trigger pulse two resistor capacitor combination is used one of the resistor r3 is variable to achieve variable speed another two terminal device called diac is used in association with the triac to have a consistent trigger at the same position in each cycle we will analyze three different conditions high speed medium speed and low speed the variable resistor kept at low for high speed gate is triggered almost at the beginning of the of each cycle almost full current goes through the motor and rotates at a higher speed a medium speed situation variable resistor is kept halfway trigger pulses are in the middle of each cycle and motor receives half the normal current low speed situation the variable resistor is uh, kept highest trigger pulses are almost at the end of each cycle very low current flows through the motor uh, let us see what's inside a practical circuit or a commercial circuit there are some few extra components for some purposes in some commercial circuits you will not see a diac instead you'll see a three terminal device which is nothing but a triac and diac combined called quadac an inductor is used to filter out any rf noise and the rc snubber is very important for motor control motors are inductive loads triacs are always making and breaking the circuit during the breaking a very high voltage can develop across the motor and these high voltage spikes are absorbed by this uh, snubber uh, this is the photo of his uh, simple track dimmer and usually the maximum power is 600 watt 500 to 600 watt and maximum current is usually 5 amp opening the cover of a commercial dimmer you will see these a quad deck the track and diac combination a potentiometer and the resistors as mentioned in the pre previous circuit diagram all the three other capacitors are shown here for some low power tools you will see that at the minimum speed setting the speed is still not as low as you may expect if you need even lower speed remove the resistor r4 across the variable resistor this chip dimmers usually use medium power track usually 5 amp for higher power tools which draws more than 5 amp one should replace the quad hack with a triac and diac combination two of the numbers are shown here these are of high power triac and diac this slide shows the basic diagram of a pwm speed control system the ac mains is converted to dc by a rectifier a capacitor is, is used to filter the ripple a mosfet or igbt is used as a power switch at the gate of this device a pwm signal is applied the dc experienced by the motor is chopped if the pulse width is wide the motor gets higher current and if the pulse width is narrow the motor will get lower current a diode is connected at the motor terminal in reverse bias this is called a flyback diode motors are inductive loads when the power is off for an inductive inductor a very high voltage can develop across the motor and this inductive surge is fed back into the motor by this diode as we are controlling the tool that is driven by ac mains 
any exposed part of the circuit will bring danger to the human body. For safety, the PWM control part of the circuit can be isolated. Here is the complete diagram that I used. A bridge rectifier is used to convert AC to DC. A small isolated 5 volt supply is used to power the control electronics. For PWM generation, a triple 5 timer IC is used. The oscillation frequency is approximately 200 Hz. PWM can be adjusted from 0 to 100% DD cycle. For an isolated MOSFET drive, I used a photovoltaic optocoupler VOM1271. Its output current is low in microampere range, so we cannot use very high PWM frequency. I used only 200 Hz. I also choose a high power MOSFET with a low uh, gate capacitance for efficient driving as the optocoupler needs 50 milliampere at the input the triple five ic is not directly connected to it a low power transistor is used as a buffer uh, this slide shows some data of the isolated mosfet driver uh, the mosfet that i used has a gate charge of only 6.8 nanocoulomb. Uh, the circuit is implemented on a proto board. Here is the bridge rectifier, the MOSFET, the diode, the fuse, and this is the isolated 5 volt supply and uh, the PWM generation, and this is the MOSFET driver. The input and output of the photovoltaic coupler is shown in this slide. This is the resistor that I'm going to remove for decreasing the motor speed down to zero. The resistor is shown uh, in the diagram as R4, connected in parallel with the potentiometer R3. Uh, this is the track DAC combination called the quad DAC. And this quad DAC is shown on the circuit board. The dimmer is now used to control the speed of a dremel tool. Speed is going up as the potentiometer knob is being rotated. Then circuit is used to control the speed of a black and decker drill. This is the PWM speed control circuit. Oscilloscope screen shows the PWM signal uh, coming from the IC output. As I rotate the potentiometer knob, the pulse width is changing as seen on the screen. Uh, this is the waveform at the gate of the MOSFET 
the output of the photovoltaic coupler. Uh, the amplitude is much higher, uh, close to 9 volt, which is sufficient to drive the MOSFET. Uh, the thermal tool is now connected with the PWM control circuit. The pulse variation is shown uh, with the speed. Uh, now the black and is connected and the pulse variation is shown.